five short game tips that I guarantee will save you shots. Let's get stuck into the video. Tip number one. Before I do that though, guys, do remember if you want me to be your free golf coach and get better every week, hit that little subscribe button down there. Let's get into that tip number one now. And it's all about this. And you've heard me bang on about this if you've watched my previous videos before. It's all about your putting stroke. Luke Donald, I did a lesson with, you can check that video out up on the bar there, gave a great bit of advice and it makes so much sense. And when I've gone on to tell it to other students of mine and explained it to them, they've gone, huh, oh yeah, I get what you mean now. Hopefully, We've all used a hammer for a little bit of DIY at home. If we think of knocking a nail into a wall, we load the hammer and we hit into it with pace and it comes to a stop as that nail goes into the wall. What we don't do is try and hit through the head nail or into the wall. We have a hammer like motion and that's the same when we come to our putting stroke what I see especially when I get into these sort of longer range puts outside of 20 feet we're getting 30 feet and we're seeing those three four puts coming into play is all because of that stroke it's very almost guessing throughout the stroke as to how far I should be hitting it so I'm here I've got a 40 foot put now and as I draw the putter back uh, and you end up trying to whack it because you didn't think you swung quick enough on the way back or swung fast enough on the way back. It always looks like you're trying to figure out how far you should be swinging it or how far you should be hitting it during the actual stroke. As where, if we think of our hammer analogy, if I just had a few practice swings and I was looking up to my target and I was thinking of my hammer, it looks a lot different. I load the pace and I hammer into the ball and I come to a stop shortly afterwards. Then when I get over, it doesn't look like there's any indecision in my stroke because I've got my nice little hammer stroke and I pop it out and lo and behold, we've nearly hold it and I've got that good pace control. So when you're on the putting green, think about your hammer stroke. Don't oh, guess throughout the hit, hit it like a hammer don't smash it obviously, just that little hammer stroke, load the pace, knock it in, and it comes to a stop after that. Let's go and take a look at tip number two. Tip number two is all about your wedge setup. Now, as the game's evolved, we're seeing that lofts are getting stronger and stronger on our iron, so our pitching wedge, generally we're seeing some of them up to like 44 degrees. So, big problem I see from a lot of players is that they have a lot of wedges that are doing the same job. So, if you look at my setup here, 50, 54, then a 60, I've got a full shot wedge, my 100 yard wedge, and then sort of my lob wedge for chipping in and around the greens. So make sure, if you just have a quick look in your bag, that you've not got two wedges that are really close in loft, i.e. a 56 and a 58. And just ask yourself, what is each wedge's job as you're going through? your bag you might have one that's your gap wedge one that's your lob wedge and bunker wedge but just make sure you've got the correct equipment for your game you don't have to go out and spend hundreds on them you might be needing a lob wedge because your highest lofted is 54 and you need something to get you out of bunkers up over big slopes or you need something that's going to help you with that little bit of an annoying yardage of maybe 70, 80 yards that you don't quite like half swinging your pitching wedge, so maybe a 54 could help you, but just make sure you've got the right wedge set up. Like I say, don't spend hundreds, but just get the right wedges for your game. Tip number three, what flight are you gonna hit your chips on? Now, you might just start getting used to actually chipping and being comfortable with chipping, but one of the big problems that I see from a lot of players is that every scenario that they end up in is, oh, well, the chipping shot or the pitching shot goes well up in the air, lands once, spins and stops. That's not quite the case. If we look at the shot that I'm faced with here, I'm about 10 paces off the green, up a little bit of an upslope and then up to a flag that is in the distance. So do I actually need a high flight here? Do I need to fly it all the way? Maybe not. Maybe you could have three flights, low, medium, and high, and you simply change your ball position with the same club, and then you can make that wedge do those three flights. So when you get into certain shots, you can pick the appropriate shot for the challenge that you face, 
and hit the right one. So for me here, I probably need a little bit more of a lower running shot because I've got loads of green to cover with. So all I do there is place the ball a little bit further back in my stance and lean the shaft ever so slightly forwards. So as I hit the shot then, it can go running up the green a little bit more and cover a little bit more ground. Just like that. But it might be a case where I need to hit a little bit more of a higher shot. So although I do there is place the ball a little bit further forwards up to the front of my stance, and I would achieve a little bit more height. If I want to play a little bit more of a mid-flight shot, I would place the ball a little bit more to the middle of my stance and see more of a mid-flighted shot. So don't just assume that every chip shot requires the same flight. Ask yourself, how do you see the ball flying? And a great tip that I've talked about before, if you were to throw the golf ball underarm to your target, how would you throw it towards that target? Would it be up in the air, a little bit flatter, a little bit mid-flight. If you can do that, then you're picturing the shot, you're getting an idea of how it reacts on the green, and you'll start to chip it closer. These next two tips, guys, are super important. And as well, remember, hit that subscribe button if you want me to be your free golf coach. How many times have you been faced with a shot like this? Real simple chip, but all of a sudden the nerves come in, and we stand there, and next thing, oh! It's gone racing over the other side of the green and do you know what? I've actually got a harder chip now and I'm not filled with any confidence. The reason I hit that shot is because I didn't get off my back foot. One of the big things I see from a lot of students when I'm chipping with them in lessons is that everything works onto their back foot. So what I mean by that is that as I take my stance, it could all look really good, but it's almost like they're trying to squeeze the ground underneath their back foot as they make the stroke. So as they come through, they push down all in an effort almost to try and lift this golf ball up. And unfortunately, I would either bottom out early around here and hit the ground, or I'd do what I've just done there, bottom out early, catch the equator of the golf ball, and it goes rocketing over the other side real simple drill you can do to help you get off that back foot and start getting a really crisp strike with your chips. Take your normal setup, then from there, your back foot, I want you to put it in line with your back front heel, sorry, and just get on the tiptoe there. So what you'll feel then is all the pressure is pretty much under this front foot. So from there then, all I do is just lean a little bit more as if the middle of my chest is now over this front foot. And what it teaches me to do, even just in some practice strokes, is just stay on that front foot. Stay there and turn a little bit towards my target because as soon as I go back to try and get on that back foot, you're gonna fall over. So it trains you just to stay in front of the ball and actually keep that weight target side instead of it coming back behind there. So just have a few little practice chips, little practice swings where you're in the position, feel like you stay over that front foot and give it a go. And then once you're confident and you're feeling like you're balanced, you're feeling like you've got it in that lead side, adopt the same stance, keep it over there, and a nice little pop out and we get that crisp little strike and see that we're starting to get the strikes with the chips. Once you're confident with it then, all you need to do is just take it into actually feeling in a normal stance. So it'd almost feel like you're hovering this back foot off the floor, but you keep on this lead foot, feel like the chest is over the front foot. From there then, nice little pops out and it becomes as easy as that. Make sure you get off that back foot try that drill. Let's take a look at the fifth and final tip that is going to save you some strokes. The fifth and final tip. I see so many golfers doing this, keeping the head down, keeping the body down. It's not how we should chip. Just because I'm only a couple of yards off this green here doesn't mean that I don't need my body to be active. So one of the things that I see from a lot of people is A, they're nervous, so we see that the body gets all tucked up in anyway, but then Right, don't mess this up, don't mess this up, and we get. Oh, it's only gone a few yards in front of me. We're not actually using our body. If we watch the pros on the television, every chip shot we see, even if it's only a little one, if you think that you had a laser light running from 
your neck all the way down to your belt buckle. Even as they chip, that laser light is turning a little bit towards the target. So just imagine that when you're actually hitting some chip shots. I want you to see that you get your body turning. It's not just all hands and arms. If it was hands and arms, it looked like this. It doesn't look right. We've got to see that we get that body turning. So when you've got your little chip shots, just imagine even if you had a traffic light, one, two, three lights in your torso, I want you to hit your chip shots and I want you to show your target the traffic lights. If we can do that, we're gonna see that there's actual motion throughout the golf swing and that turn will allow your arms to keep working and allow you to drag the club along and actually start to get some better strikes. You won't get choppy and steep on it. You'll start to brush it a little bit more all by feeling that you're turning your lights to the target. So next time you're chipping, I want you to turn your lights towards the target. And from there, we can see I'm fully turned towards the target. Nice little finish, clubs pointing where my target is. My weight's over that lead side and I've gone here. It's not all just arms. Get the body turning and from there then, we're gonna see that your chips become crisper, more controlled and closer to the hole. Guys, go through that list again. Five things that I guarantee will help you lower your chipping and your short game scores. Thanks for watching. Hit that subscribe button and I'll see you in the next lesson.